If you have a question, if you have a question, let me turn this music down. If you've got a question that you'd like to ask, that question can be about anything. It could be about business, it could be about sales, it could be about um, life in general. Anything, everything, social media, really nothing is off limits. We've heard a lot of different questions from a lot of different people from a lot, a lot of different places, including countries, which is cool. I think uh, a couple of uh, rounds ago, we had someone call in from Nigeria. We had someone call in from Lebanon. Uh, we had someone from the, the UK, right? Is that, am I right in saying that? I think so. Um, and all over the US. And uh, I've say it, I say it every time at the end of these live rounds that these are my favorite things and we should do it more often. So uh, we actually listened to ourselves this time and we're coming at you just, I don't know, four or five days uh, after we did one last week. So I'm excited. These are always really, really good questions. And the reality is there's, you know, 119, 120,000 people that have liked this Facebook page. And I beg to guess that if you have a question, there's probably, I don't know, 8,000 people, 5,000 people out there that have the exact same question or are going through the exact same thing or experiencing the exact same things. So when I can answer someone's question specifically, that specific message gets very broad when it goes across the audience and you may never know who you're helping just by asking the question. Um, and as always, if I don't know the answer, I'll try to point you in the right direction, try to connect you with someone that that does. I certainly don't want to sit here and um, just talk for the sake of being heard. Uh, if I think I can provide value, I will. If I can't, I won't. Um, that's it. Uh, Sam Ryan last time asked, best advice to give a young entrepreneur? Who is it? Sam? Sam, this is from the last. So Sam asked, what is the best advice for a young entrepreneur or just a new entrepreneur? From a young entrepreneur. From a, a young entrepreneur. The best advice that I would give a, a young entrepreneur is to just find someone, uh, another entrepreneur that's doing what you want to do or that has been successful, uh, period, and just go study underneath that person, whether that means an internship, an apprenticeship, whether that means paid, whether that means unpaid. Um, I would spend as much possible time as I could, especially early on before you get started, uh, just learning uh, from those that have done what you want to do. Um, I think, and TJ and I talk about this often, that that's going to be kind of the new form of college or, or education uh, at some point down the road that people will um, start valuing and realizing the value in a apprentice type relationship more than they will the normal higher education uh, system. And I know plenty of people that didn't go to school, um, but the things that they learned over those four years or those eight years uh, that they were able to instantly apply to their business and that, I just realized my necklace is hanging out, I look real ghetto right now. Um, and those experiences they've had already in business while the other people were in school, um, you know, give them a huge head start that the other others couldn't catch up to. So that's, that's played out a million times. Um, so that would be my advice. Just go find someone that's done either what you want to do or that has succeeded at a high level and just spend as much time as you possibly can with that person. Jeff, thank you for that comment. Hey, what's up, Adam? This is Tyler Harris. How are you? Hey, what's up, Tyler? Not too much, man. Where, where are you, uh, where are we calling you from or where are you calling us from? But we called you. I'm calling you from Oxford, Mississippi, which is oh, nice. towards the top of the state. Got it. Very cool, man. Did you have a question we could answer or try to answer for you? Yeah, I was just kind of asking uh, basically how you got your start, like online, what you were using to get traction. Uh, I just start, I just launched an e-commerce site like a week ago, and I was looking into like targeting and retargeting campaigns. but. We're trying to build a customer avatar, and we haven't really made any sales yet to know, I guess, what our demographics are. The custom avatar, that's the product? Yeah, like apparel. Okay, got it, yeah, yeah. Um, man, so I really just got started on social media about 18 months ago. Um, and, I mean, the key that really with my growth of my page was from Facebook Live. I mean, that doesn't really translate um, as well in the kind of the retail world that you're trying to go into, um, but it was those live videos. Um, what I can tell you is one thing I learned from doing Facebook ads that a lot of people don't talk about is that this whole idea of kind of reverse engineering who your ultimate customer is, 
um, you know, who ultimately you want to buy your clothes and your apparel. So when you're doing that, when you're creating these interests on Facebook uh, within those audiences, you have to think of you know what type of things do those people like. Like for example, when I'm when I'm doing stuff with uh, first responders, I'll just use first responders as an example. If I'm trying to attract police officers so that I can sell them a T-shirt about supporting police officers, I'm not going to necessarily target. Um, let's for example, I love cops. Because if I'm a police officer, I don't necessarily like the page I love cops. Now, what I would target would be something like the National um, Chiefs of Police Association. Because everyone that likes the National Chiefs of Police, police Association is probably a police officer, not just a civilian that you know, supports police. Um, right. So that was one thing I had to learn because I was you know, using all these audiences that thought, I thought made sense, but when I was told that information, I can't remember where I learned that, but when I was told that information, it changed the way I looked at those interests and the audiences. And all of a sudden, I started attracting the right people. So get really specific with it. Really specific, yeah. I mean, extreme. Not just thin blue line pages, but like fallen off certain line pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you want to get as specific as possible on those because you know you want to make sure that you know your conversion ultimately, because um, I mean you're you know, a little different and when I'm advertising for my page, it's just to get a bigger following because we're not really selling a, a physical product right this second. Um, but if I was selling a physical product, I mean, my entire, your entire goal should be what that conversion is. It's, you know, $27 per, per purchase or whatever it is, the cost per uh, link click, you know, to get to your site. Those are the main things you're, you're focused on. Yeah, I got it. Cool. All right, man. The other thing I'll tell you is um, we haven't seen videos working as well on Facebook lately. Um, and we think it's because it just takes people too long to decide if they like it or not. Uh, so if, when it comes to actually increasing their reach and engagement on your page, um, we just found that it's like awesome memes, like a good photo with a good quote, uh, something that looks really cool. Um, that's getting way more like likes, shares, and comments, which will get your page um, to a much higher reach, which is ultimately what is going to grow your page. But people are able to see the picture. They know if they like it instantly, and they're going to hit the like, comment, or share button where it'll take them you know, a minute or two to, to, to decide if they like it on a, on a video. And you usually don't have that long to get, to get them. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you've just been using like Canva or something kind of like that? So yeah, like you can do Canva. There's all kinds of apps. There's an app called Studio uh, that I use a lot that has a bunch of templates for posts that have already been created. And you can kind of use some of those. Um, but yeah, I'm always checking like the top 20 apps in the photography and uh, like the, the whatever that session is, like the audio or the video and photo section to see like what new apps are popping up. I've got like 30 of them in a photography file. Um, right. So, so yeah, it's always trying to find something that catches people's eye. I've got Canva and Spark, and I found one called Guru, so I was going to try it. I just haven't tried it just yet. Yeah, I haven't heard of that one. Another one that I use a lot um, in light is awesome. It's E N L I G H T in light. Um, Typorama I'll use pretty frequently. And let's see, Mosho is an interesting one that I've been using a lot lately. M O S H O W. But I appreciate you calling in, man, and I appreciate you uh, following the page. On the last live round, Jill yeah. asked, "Do you think building your self brand would help sell life insurance?" Do I think building a personal brand will help someone sell life insurance? Absolutely, one hundred thousand percent. And here's why: people want to buy from people. People buy from people they like. Um, it's all about relationships and what better place to build a relationship than on social media. Um, it's for people to get to know you and to connect with you and feel as though they know you, um, even if they've only met you a time or two, or even if you've never even met at all. So I strongly suggest and recommend and encourage highly 
to be building a personal brand no matter what you're doing, um, but especially in insurance. Dan Clark, who spoke at Meltdown in the Desert, um, I've talked about him a million times, I'll talk about him again because it was one of the best keynote speeches I've ever heard. But Dan Clark talked about the fact that his, uh, the banker that they used for their business, that his office was an hour and a half away from Dan's office, and he said they would meet regularly and they never, ever, ever talked business. That's interesting. He said that if he was in a situation to where him and that banker, who was now his friend, were ever discussing interest rates, that that meant that something terrible had happened to their relationship. And the encouragement from that was moving forward for everyone else, that if you are ever having those type of minutia type conversations about business when it's in a sales environment, then that means that you haven't built a strong enough relationship and that person does not feel like they know you or trust you. Another great quote I heard the other day is, people don't buy because they understand, they buy because they feel feel understood and that just comes with building relationships so um, it doesn't matter if you're selling life insurance if you're it really doesn't matter if you're a pro athlete entrepreneur administrative assistant I don't care you need to be building a personal brand because all that means is it's building up your reputation and that's something that you're gonna need uh, to live in the year 2000s so we're calling Jacob awesome Jacob Hello? What's up, Jacob? This is Tyler Harris, man. How are you? I'm good, man. How you doing? I am doing well. I heard that you had a question on this fine Wednesday afternoon. Absolutely. So I was wondering what you thought about uh, I, what I would, I would call the lack of gratitude uh, out there on a lot of the social media platforms. I'm seeing a lot of these uh, social media accounts and people in general who are really hyped up you know, 50, 100,000 followers, and they're following 1,000 people. Yeah. Like, no, no, no gratitude, no thank you. I mean, not even on social media as much as in just business in general, people who, who feel like they deserve your respect instead mm -hmm. of earning it or have no gratitude. I don't know what your thoughts on that were. Yeah, Maybe man. Or how, you, how you look at it. Dude, that's a really good question. It's a really good question because it was kind of like a multi-layered question. Um, I mean, I think the whole the lack of gratitude I think is real like I think that definitely exists um, not just on social media but just everywhere um, and I'm a firm firm believer in practicing gratitude not only for the things that you have but the things that you want like that's like that's like the, yeah. the 2.0 version like if you can start expressing real gratitude uh, for the, all those things that you want like one day in your life um, then some magical stuff can happen but being grateful for like followers and for people's like audience like that to me um, is critical and there's one thing that you said though like with the people that have like hundred thousand two hundred thousand followers and they don't follow that many people that you know I don't know if it if that's like any indication of like gratitude just because you know when you're scrolling through your feed like if you have so many follower people that you're actually following like you don't ever see anything um you're just because yeah, you, know, yeah. you got so many people it's hard to see the stuff you really want um yeah but i think you know showing gratitude for for people that follow their page like i think that's I mean, for me, that's a huge, huge part of what I do and just answering messages and responding to comments. Like, you know, I don't want to ever be in a situation ever where you think like, oh, I'm too good to respond to this person's message or I'm too busy to respond to this person's message. And, you know, it may not be within two hours, maybe within 72 hours, but, you know, I certainly want to respond to everyone and give them, you know, the respect that they uh, deserved by just putting something out there into the world. It's not easy for someone to get up the guts to to ask a question or to express something like that in a message. So I'm definitely cognizant of that for sure. Yeah, it just seems, I mean, not I mean, just in the world in general, yeah. you know, just even from a thank you for opening the door, but mm -hmm. in business, I find the gratitude so much more just important and, you know, without saying that it's, I don't want to call it a tool, but man, so much gratitude has opened so many doors for me business wise. Absolutely. I just don't see how people can't see how that's, you know, how do you not? And, and that's, and I mean, and that's probably why it's because it's so rare that it's refreshing. Like when you meet someone that's just full of gratitude, you're like, holy crap, like what is, 
who is this person on? <laughs> you know, like, what, <laughs> right? like what's yeah. going on with this this guy or this girl? Like, man, they're just uh, they're just like full of life and happy because you can't be grateful and sad at the same time, right? Absolutely, yeah. And so, if you know that. That's an interesting concept. Like, if you know that, then you can do things like practice gratitude, and it'll ultimately, it may not make you super happy, but it'll make you not sad during the time that you're expressing it. Like, you can't be in a bad mood and be, and just read out 100 things that you love or that you're grateful for and, and like, immediately go right back into that terrible mood. So that's yeah, interesting. Absolutely. I mean, I mean that practice. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a strong practice. Yeah, you. Uh, I think I saw something you post about you do some kind of journal in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a gratitude journal. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, I do that every morning. It's called a gratitude journal. Sometimes. But yeah, man, that's and that's just been as of recent over the past like mm, four or five weeks. Uh, but yeah, and it's just, and it's not like a list of a thousand things. It's just like four or five things in that particular moment in that particular morning that I just happen to feel grateful for. You know. Yeah, that's what's up, that's man. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk yeah, to me. Absolutely, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for sending us a message. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Have a good day. All right, bud. See ya. All right, bye.